Hey YouTube, this is going to be the revised part 1 of how to solve Rubik's Cube blindfolded because the first time I did it, it didn't really turn out so good and, you know, even though it's my most popular video, not a lot of people continue with the tutorial so I decided to just redo the whole thing. But before I go on, I should also mention a few other things. This method that I'm going to be teaching you is much different than the regular method that I teach you in my tutorial on how to solve a Rubik's Cube. Because in that method, you start by getting the white cross, then you get the corners, and you get the middle layer, and then you get the top layer. Now, this method is much different. What you're doing is you're solving each piece one by one, literally. And I know it's going to sound like a long process, and in the beginning it will be. In the beginning, it's probably going to take maybe like five to seven minute memorization, five to seven minute solve. Or even, for my first blind solve, the first time I ever tried to do it, I got it. But that's because I spent like 30 minutes memorizing the cube. And then the execution, which was the solve, that took about 10 minutes. So in the beginning, it's going to take a long time. But after you get some practice, you can get down to about 5 minutes with this method. Memorization and solve included, which is what I have now. So what you're going to do is you're going to first orient all the corners. And then afterwards, you're going to place all the corners one by one, like I said before. And then, in the third step, you're going to orient and permute all the edges at the same time. And I'll explain how that works in the third step, but that's basically what you're going to be doing. So, the first step in solving a Rubik's Cube blindfolded is to orient the corners. And depending on what your top and bottom colors are, that's how you're going to have to orient them. It's a little bit hard to explain. So, for me, my top is yellow and my front is blue. And what you want to do in... Um, orienting the corners is since on a Rubik's brand cube yellow is opposite white that means that all the corners have to be oriented so that yellow or white is on top or on bottom so it's okay if this white corner see this white of this corner the white green and orange is facing the top because it's a bottom color so it could face the top and this yellow corner over here the yellow red and blue it's okay if this yellow is facing the white side because it's a top and bottom color. So that could be facing the top or bottom. It doesn't really matter. So you just want to look around the cube for now and look for any corners that are not facing the top and bottom already with yellow and white. So these three you can see are oriented because it has yellow or white facing the top. And you have none on the bottom because all the whites and yellows of the corners are not facing the bottom. So that's how basically things should start. And before I continue, I should mention that you want to make sure you have the same top and front while you're blind solving, the entire solve. Because when you're blind solving, if, you're, if you keep changing the way you're holding the cube, your memorization will be thrown off completely. And I'll explain that in, how, in the video on how to memorize the Rubik's Cube. You'll see that you need the same top and front. So just go along with the same top and front. So, for orientation, you need to know two algorithms. So now, what you're going to do is you're going to start by getting pieces into what's called the buffer zone, which is this location, this corner location. Not just the yellow, orange, and blue corner, but this exact location. See, this corner piece over here, this could be in the this location, and it's still the buffer zone. This corner over here can be in this location, it's still the buffer zone. It's just this location, the bottom left of the up face. That's the buffer zone. And that's what we're going to be calling it. And also, in the top left of the up face, that's the undisturbed zone. That's what we're going to be calling it for the entire time that we're doing this. So what you want to do is start by getting pieces that are not oriented into this buffer zone. And the only problem is that since this is an undisturbed corner, you cannot disturb it, which is pretty self-explanatory. Which means that if you want to get pieces in, to the buffer zone, which is what it's called setup moves, because you're setting it up to do the algorithm. You can't turn back, you can't turn left, and you can't turn up, because that will move this corner. So you can only turn down, right, and front, which is enough sides to get all the pieces into this buffer zone. So for this one, this is the first example that I'm going to be showing. This one needs to turn counterclockwise in order to go into the oriented position. So, you need to move this into the buffer zone. You could just do that by simply doing an F prime. And that will get it into your buffer zone. 
And remember, it's this location. So, if you put this piece into this buffer zone, then you can do the counterclockwise orientation algorithm. Now, but if you put it in here, it looks like it doesn't have to be oriented anymore. But you're doing this in relation to where it originally was, where you found it. So you're going to move this into your buffer zone, and you're going to do this algorithm for the counterclockwise orientation. U, R, U, I, R, I, U, R, U, I, R, I, L, I, R, U, R, I, U, I, R, U, R, I, U, I, L. And now, it doesn't look like it's oriented, but you have to remember to turn it back to where you originally did it, doing the exact setup moves that you did to get it into the buffer zone in reverse. So, it's not as complicated when you just do an F, I, and an F. But if, let's say, you wanted to get this one in, and you did D, I, F, 2, then you have to remember exactly what moves you did. And also, you could also, for this one, do D, 2, F. So, and then after that, if you were to do F, 2, D, then that would mess up your memorization and probably the orientation like I did with this one. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do a few more examples and also I need to teach you the other algorithm. So remember, the one that I just taught you was the one for counterclockwise orientation. The one I'm going to teach you now is for clockwise orientation, like with this corner over here. In relation to the down face, which is white for me, you need to turn this clockwise in order to have it oriented like this one is here. I just did that off camera. So, what you want to do is you could do a D F as your setup moves to get it into the buffer zone. And then you're going to do this algorithm to twist it clockwise. And remember, it's in relation to its original location. So it doesn't have to go counterclockwise, it has to go clockwise, because it was originally here. So the algorithm is R U R I U I R U R I U I L I U R U I R I U R U I R I L. And again, it doesn't look like it's oriented yet, but you have to turn it back, doing the exact set of moves in reverse. F prime, D prime. And it's now oriented. And you might, notice, you might notice that those two algorithms are very similar. You can just actually even take the two R U R I U I's and the two U R U I R I's and then just make that times two, like shown right here. So... What you can do after that is just memorize it as R U R I U I times two and then L I U R U I R I times two L. And then also just switch the two R U R I U I times two and U R U I R I times two for the counterclockwise. If that makes sense to you, then good, because I'm showing it right here, so hopefully you were able to follow along with that. Now also you might notice that this corner gets turned every time with that algorithm because as you might know with a Rubik's cube you can't just turn one corner out of place because then the cube would be unsolvable but what it does is it affects this corner back here and this you don't have to worry about because if this is your undisturbed corner and you don't disturb it the entire time it'll come together with the rest of them because once they're all oriented correctly this one has to be oriented too or the cube will be unsolvable so I'm going to do the last two corners for the examples so, this one here has to turn counterclockwise in order to be oriented in relation to the down face. So, I'm going to do DI F2. And then you're going to do the counterclockwise orientation. U R U I R I U R U I R I L I R U R I U I R U R U I L. And then do F2 D to fix it. And it's now oriented. And now with this last corner, this undisturbed corner will come together just like I show here. This has to turn also counterclockwise. You can see the rotation. And you're just going to do F2 to get that into the buffer zone. And do U R U I R I U R U I R I L I R U R I U I R U R I U I L. And then do F2 to undo it. And now all the corners, including your undisturbed corner, are oriented. So go on to part two, you can click the link here, or you can click the link in the description. Whatever you have to do, go to part two to learn the next step. Thank you for watching.